Hi and welcome to another video. Today with a known guest, the usual suspect, Yannick. Very, very nice to have you here. Uh, today we're going to talk about Intune updates. Tell me about it. Hi, Niklas. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this session. I think a lot of new changes are um, released in the last few days. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this session where we go through all the different um, new things uh, which was uh, added to, to Intune. Great. So let's get started. OK, we have prepared a few slides to show you all the news. Uh, as you can see, there was a ton going on in Intune just in this calendar year of 2023. Um, lots of features. I mean, even those listed on this slide are just my personal highlights or some that I would say, hey, look at them. And I don't want to go through all of them because it's just too much, but I highlighted a few minor settings and before we're going to talk about the, the, the big changes. So first of all, um, the Windows servers are displayed distinctively from clients in Intune. Now you may ask, hey, Windows Server, these cannot join to Azure AD. Yes, you're right, but consider unified settings management through Defender for Endpoint. Then you can apply Endpoint security settings from Intune to your Defender for Endpoint onboard devices. And to have a better assignment of these devices of the Windows servers, yeah, you can make a distinctive uh, query, a dynamic rule to target this Windows Server OS. Then practice remediation was renamed to only remediation and also moved to a new location. Now, if you wonder, you can't find that feature, yeah, make sure you have the right licenses. But if you're using currently the new view in Intune, you do not see this, this remediation. So you have to switch back to the old view. Then we had the new security baselines for Microsoft 365 apps and Edge. So not Windows, just these two products. But I think pretty cool because now we have uh, finally an upgraded version of the security baselines that can be easily deployed within one profile. Then around Intune, we can we could create Windows Labs. There was a blog post from myself and um, it's now in public preview in the Azure AD and Intune scenario. Works pretty good. Um, I think it's definitely worth to give it a try. What's also new is the partner portals from the devices section in Intune. A feature that lets you allow to view drivers and feature and um, guarantee information and so on for HP and Microsoft Surfaces devices currently. Then also pretty cool that it went so fast. The Employment Privilege Management feature, EPM in short, is already generally available. Also there I have made a video on that feature with the local administrator um, management. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. Then we can see a new URL for the Microsoft Intune Admin Center. It's now intune.microsoft.com. Um, it's recommended to change on that. And we have a new feature, Microsoft Tunnel for mobile application management, also now generally available, which comes from the Intune suite. And last but not least here, the Win32 App Super Sedans is also now a feature that is generally available. Wonderful. So these were the small highlights. Now I want to give over to Yannick. So here we go. Yes, um, with this lot of um, yeah, small highlights um, in this calendar year, uh, year, we will jump to the highlights in this month. We will talk about the release uh, 2306 um, from Intune and we'll talk about the yeah, main new features which are added into this release. Um, the first thing is setting insights with Intune security baseline. This feature um, I cannot yet test in my tenant. It's not already uh, um, activated in my tenant, uh, but it's really cool. Um, when you create a security baseline, you have really a lot of settings and um, it's always not really clear what's behind the setting, what is um, a good configuration for this. And now you get some insights what other organizations um, configured in their tenant um, and what is recommended um, for this setting. And you can um, yeah, then decide if this also apply for your company or for your organization. The next thing is the application control uh, policy in the endpoint security tab. Um, with this, you can define um, 
and trusted installer. You can say the Intune management extension is a trusted installer. This means each application which is um, installed via this Intune management extension is trusted and is allowed for um, application control policies. Um, the EPN runs with evil, uh, elevated access now in uh, Windows 11 menu. This is a small change, but um, it will help a lot. Um, in the past, you find the EPM um, menu point in the more section in Windows 11, and now it's directly in the yeah, main menu of Windows 11, and it's much easier to find um, yeah, the EPM in this menu. Uh, MUM for Microsoft Edge uh, for business. Also, this is really nice. You now can create MAM policies um, in the Microsoft Edge browser. This means you can uh, extend your um, security when you say a uh, user is not allowed to copy out uh, content from an email or something like this. Um, yeah, uh, it's already already available for mobile phones since years, I guess, and now it's also possible for the Edge browser on Windows devices. Um, troubleshooting pane is now general available. Um, this pane is yeah um, already available since some months. Um, I think everyone who already had a look into it and worked with this uh, really likes it, and now it's also general available. It's full in the support. And I guess there are also some minor UI changes which are included in the latest Intune release. The driver and firmware management uh, for Intune. This is a feature I guess a lot of different people waited a long time for this feature. And now it's here. Uh, you have two uh, different ways to configure this. You can say you directly uh, allow all uh, driver updates after five days, for example. This means um, someone a company publish a new driver version and uh, yeah after five days it will be uh, rolled out to the devices in your organization or you can say you will manually approve it this means you have an overview of all drivers which are applies to your um, to your devices in your organization and you can decide if you want to approve this driver update or if you want to decline it or not roll out to your devices and uh, also here a feature where I'm really happy that this is now um, coming into the product also without uh, an additional uh, license. It's on demand remediation. Um, I think um, endpoint analytics remediation scripts is a really powerful feature and a lot of custom solutions was built on top of um, this feature and now we have the possibility to not say hey the script runs once per hour once per day now you can say hey this device has an issue we want to trigger this uh, mediation script directly on this device um, on demand you can also build some workflows from yeah self-developed tools um, now you have much more possibilities to use the full power of um, endpoint remediation scripts and as um, niklas already mentioned they also moved it to another uh, location. I uh, was wondering where is um, endpoint uh, where are the remediation scripts? And then um, we realized that it's not visible in the new UI view. You have to change to the legacy view or to the old view, and then you also uh, will see remediations. Good. Then. Um, on our last slide, uh, we will make a short recap um, of some major news also from this year, what's going on around Intune. Uh, the first thing is the Microsoft score, uh, Store. I think a lot of you already realized it or hopefully <laughs> already realized it <laughs> that the um, old uh, Windows Store for Business was uh, retired on March 2023. 20, uh, and uh, will be replaced with a solution which used WinGet under the hood. Uh, this means you can deploy um, Windows Store apps, but also Win32 apps via a really nice integration into Intune. You have the store, you can search for an app, um, and, have, and you have not longer go to the old Windows Store for Business portal, add the app to your environment, then deploy it. And it's now much easier, more seamless um, to deploy an app via this new uh, Windows Store for Business. 
Um, and the, I guess the most uh, or the biggest uh, change or the uh, biggest feature um, features which are uh, included into Intune is the Intune Suite. The Intune Suite uh, add-ons uh, for Intune. This means something where you have to buy an additional tool. In the um, in the past, you have now a solution which is directly integrated in Intune with an additional license. You can also buy a license where you have um, all in, uh, but you can also um, yeah buy only um, dedicated features. And this is really a lot what's in. Um, these are really powerful tools. I will not go through all of them, but as already mentioned, you have um, something like EPM, Endpoint Privilege Management, that you can say only apps from Microsoft can, or all apps from Microsoft can run with ev ev evaluated rights. Or you can say only a specific apps um, can be run with, um, with um, yeah, the um, administrative rights and not all apps um, as it is in the past that you say, hey, this user is an admin or this user is not an admin. Now you can um, make this more granular based on the app. Or you have something like um, advanced endpoint analytics. It's currently um, a small feature in my point of view. You have um, um, anomaly detection where you see, hey, you have an increasing uh, um, uh, crash rates of your apps and you can uh, will be yeah get displayed which apps um, occurs um, crashes on your environment you also have device timeline this is also a feature which is part of the advanced endpoint analytics that you see really timeline when uh, something happened on a device um, this is really nice and i'm really sure that this feature will also grow in the coming months and years. And with this, I will hand over to you, Niklas, that you will talk about um, the other major changes. Yeah, thank you very much, Yannick. Um, the Intune Suite, yeah, it's, it's really great to see such a development in this area. Um, I want to add some notes to it, especially yeah, for the advanced app management. I, we don't know much about it yet, but I think we can really see something great coming there in the future. Um, in combination with WinGet, for example, and Intune, I mean, there's lots of cool things which are currently still missing in Intune. Uh, think, for example, for updating, patching, and some other maybe a vulnerability management. Um, all those features which we know from other products, um, hopefully we can also see them in Intune at some time. And with the cloud-based certificate management, I mean, with Intune, um, we always had a kind of the limitation when our devices are not on-premise joined anymore with the certificate deployment. Um, this was always a challenge um, need to be addressed with connector instance. Um, hopefully we can also see there's something coming cloud only based um, in the Intune suite. So I will be really excited to see what's coming there. Then we have uh, Windows Labs, of course, also a huge endpoint security topic uh, with the capability to store the local administrator password on the cloud object of the device. So it, uh, also here when the device is only joined to Azure AD, uh, we now have the capability yeah, to store the password online and also retrieve and rotate it through Intune. So that's pretty, pretty cool and uh, makes us easier to, to complete our journey to cloud only. And I also want to briefly mention Windows Auto Patch. Uh, we can see some nice development there with some new features such as the Auto Patch groups and Hans configuration and also policy health and reporting so this product also gets continuously uh, developed and I'm quite excited to see what's coming there. Yeah. So that was the recap and also with the video, I hope, um, yeah, that was a, a good summary for you folks out there. I think uh, Intune, yeah, we, we, it's really cool to, cool to see it such uh, in a growing, in a growing speed um, to see such new features uh, in such a small timeline, I mean, uh, if you think what's coming there in, in maybe a year or so, I mean, could make a video <laughs> with uh, on hours, I think. <laughs> so pretty cool. And I'm, I'm really excited to see also there um, what's coming in the future. And yeah, with that, I want to thank you very much, Yannick, um, to have you on board in this thank video. You. And uh, I'm sure we we'll see us in, in some next videos with some other cool topics. So thank you very much and goodbye. Yes, thank you very much. Bye bye.